Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I am Darren, I am your host, and today I've got a great guest that's been on before, Mr. John Setzler of Man Cave Meals. We're going to talk about grills, barbecues, and all kinds of stuff. I'll be right back with Mr. John Setzler. Don't go away. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. Hey all, I want to take a second and talk about Inkbird's brand new instant read thermometer, the IHT-1S. This thing has a lot of great high-end features and a very affordable price. It is 100% waterproof with an IP67 rating, a 2 to 3 second ultra fast response time, backlit, fully rechargeable, no batteries to replace. This thing has got all the high-end features that you would want in an instant read thermometer. Very durable. So check it out, guys. Check out the Inkbird IHT-1S instant read thermometer. I think you're going to love it. It'll be your go-to instant read from now on. And now back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. Welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I am Darren. I'm your host. And today I've got a guest that I've had on before, but I'm always glad to have him on, Mr. John Setzler of man cave meals we're going to talk about some uh, new things that he has on his man cave deck and also how to uh, cook stuff without smoke on the backyard so john welcome back to the podcast and just let to introduce yourself again so everybody kind of knows who you are hi darren uh thanks again for having me on i'm john setzler and uh i do man cave meals which uh exists on facebook uh and YouTube. Uh, I make cooking videos and uh, I put other cooking related social media content together that I share through the Man Cave Meals <laughs> Facebook page. And I do some uh, commercially oriented social media also for Atlanta Grill Company. And uh, that's uh, pretty much what's keeping me busy these days. Yeah, for the longest time, John was the uh, guy who did all the Kamado Joe ceramic grill videos i'll look all the teaching you how to use it and all that and he's kind of expanded out into some other other products now especially now with atlanta grill company um so that's one of the things i want to talk to you about is some of the new stuff because you you're always you like me or actually you did this before i did where you get uh, companies that you know want to send you grills to test out and do videos on so you always have a, a rotation on your deck there and um so you got a couple new things, and one of the new things that I've talked about uh, before on my other podcast, where I had the, one of the developers of the Pellet Joe on the uh, on the podcast, so the ceramic pellet grill, uh, you got that on there, and you also got the PK Go. So let's talk a little bit about the Pellet Joe. Uh, since you've worked extensively with the Kamado grills, especially the Kamado Joes, um, what's the major difference in the uh, Pellet Joe compared to the other uh, Kamado Joes? Uh, well, it's easier to look at it uh, from the perspective of what's the major similarities because it's more like a Kamado grill than it is a pellet grill. It's uh, that's that's one of the ways I'm trying to look at this pellet Joe uh, because in my mind, when Kamado Joe first uh, started floating uh, pictures and leaks about this grill. I'm asking myself why, uh, and a lot of the, a lot of people in the social media community are saying the same thing. You know, why would you want this? But it's a pellet grill only because it's powered. It's fueled by pellets. It's a Kamado grill in every other aspect of the word. It's uh, you have to look at this particular grill as a pellet fired Kamado. It's not like a Traeger or it's not like a Camp Chef. It's not like any other pellet grill I've had. I've had two Traegers, I've had the Yoder, and this is a different beast. It, it, it's a Kamado grill. And so when you, when you think about the Kamado Joe pellet Joe, you have to think about it as a Kamado rather than a pellet grill. And when you think about it like that, it's a little easier to understand this grill, it is 
it will do most of the things that a Kamado will do. It's it's good at the low and slow smoking. I've done a good bit of that on it, had no problems. It's good at, you know, a mid-range cooking at 350. Uh, it's good at higher temperature cooking at 450. Like I've roasted chickens, I've done wings, I've done some higher temperature cooks. I haven't gotten around to doing a pizza yet. That's coming. Uh, in fact, I might do that this week, but uh, it's a Kamado grill. And the only place I think that it falls short and it doesn't fall very, fall, very short is in the searing category. Pellet grills are notoriously no good at searing, but this one is a, a deal breaker right there because when you crank this grill up, it gets hot enough to do some uh, perfect searing, but it's, it's, it's different in the aspect that it's searing over very high temperature indirect heat. You get a little bit of what you could call direct heat from the drip tray that's underneath the grill because it's close. It's only a couple inches below the grill and that thing gets red hot at night when you don't have a lot of light going on. You can <laughs> see that thing glowing red and it, it sears. It sears really well because of that. And when you've got some, uh, you know, some fat dripping off a ribeye onto that thing, it flares and it creates some flame. So you get some of that flame kiss uh, from this grill and it, it does a really good job of that. The only other area I think that it falls short of a full-blown Kamado is it doesn't have the ability to do any what I would consider real a two-zone setup where you have indirect versus direct. It's all it's either all high temperature searing direct or it's all mid to low temperature indirect. It doesn't do the uh, the two-zone and it will it will accept the Kamado Joe Dojo as an accessory. It will not accept the Joe Tisserie. There's not enough depth in it uh, to run a run the rotisserie on it. So I hope I've I hope I've answered your question here and kind of covered what this grill is and what it isn't because it's it's not a pellet grill and it's really uh, unfair to even compare it to any pellet grills that are out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's more, like you said, it's more of a, a pellet fired Kamado, but you do have some of the limitations that you have on a pellet grill, like the, uh, the smoke profile, for instance, is that correct? Where you, you have a more mild smoke fl uh, flavor than you would if you dumped a whole bunch of pecan in a Kamado. Right. Yeah. It, uh, it won't produce the heavy smoke that you can produce with a Kamado, but, I'm not sure if it's the design on this grill or something else. This pellet grill produces better smoke and more of it than any of my other grills. It produces far more than my original Traeger. <clears throat> it produces more than the Yoder. And you've got the, uh, you've got the, the Traeger Timberline now. And if you, that Timberline, when you're running on that super smoke mode, it produces more smoke than the average pellet grill. This uh, pellet, Joe, for me, it looks like I'm getting about the same amount of smoke as the Traeger when it's running under the super smoke mode, but I can get that uh, up into the 400 degree range. It doesn't stop me at 225. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because, um, you know, we're going to get into this down the road when we start talking about cooking without getting smoke profile, but, um, usually, you know, you gotta be in that 250, 275 to 300 to really have a discernible smoke profile when, when you're cooking, especially with a pellet grill, because they, they usually burn hot. And when they burn hot, they, all the, uh, volatile stuff that makes that smoky flavor kind of dissipate through the, through the heat. So, so let's get into a little bit about that PK go. Cause I saw you, uh, actually did a cook on that and posted that up. I'm actually going to share my screen because I got that on here somewhere. I think let me get to the right screen here. There we go. Uh, I think I'm going to pull it up right there. 
Tell me if that was the one is it right there. I think it is, right? Oh, uh, no, that's today's cook on the PK3. I did that on the PK36. Okay, so I, th I thought you did that on the, actually on the PK Go. Well, well the, la the last cook I did on the PK Go was the lamb, the rack of lamb. Did you have that in here or no? Uh, where are we looking here? Facebook? Yeah, that's in the peak. That's in the. It's, it's on the Atlanta Grill Company. This, this. Oh, uh, there's a PK Grill. Here, here you go. Here's a PK Go that you did. Yeah, I cooked those ribeyes the other day on the PK Go. So uh, yeah, so this, so this thing here is it's uh, pretty cool. So you did these. Oh, it's way beyond cool. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing just it had, came out what two or three months ago? Uh, I think it it finally landed. Yeah, a couple of months ago. It's been in the works for a long time, and its release got delayed by COVID. Um, they wanted that out this summer, and it just didn't make it this past summer. So this is very similar to the PK360. It's just like, you know, a mini PK360 because it's got the very similar shape. Um, it's not, you know, the, the regular rectangle. It's more of that oval shape like the 360 instead of the original PK. And the unique thing about this, though, is that you can pretty much break it in half and use, use it as two grills, correct? Yeah, this is, it's what's called the, that's an option on this grill. It's called the flip kit. Uh, you can pop the lid off of this grill and set it in another base that comes with it. And this thing comes with two sets of grill grates. It comes with a solid, a cast iron grill grate that fits over the base that you see in the picture here. And it also comes with a two piece one where you can set up with just half of what half of it on, or you can use both halves of it and have two uh, hibachi style grills out of this setup. Now that thing looks like it'd be perfect for camping, taking, uh, if you're going to a cabin for, you know, a week, uh, going to a uh, tailgating for a football game. I mean, that's what, it, to me, it looks like it's, it's designed for that. I mean, it doesn't look like it's, you know, no, no problem at all picking that thing up and throw it in the back of a car or a truck, right? Nope, none at all. It's not very heavy. It's uh, I don't, I don't remember what the weight spec on it is, but it's not heavy at all. Even with all the pieces stuffed inside of it, it's an easy one-person carry by the handle. The 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 piece the the lid mates to the base, and there's some latches that pop up that hold it together where it can't come flying open on you. And yeah, it's uh it'd be perfect for tailgating or perfect for anywhere you want to take it with you. That's one of the reasons I got this one. I'm replacing a uh, Weber. Uh, it's the Weber go anywhere that I've had for so long, the little small rectangular Weber portable charcoal grill. I'm replacing it with this. And uh, I've cooked on this thing eight or nine times already. Uh, and I am super happy with it. I, I love cooking on it. I haven't done a long, low and slow cook on it yet, but I'm going to because I know it can handle it. I know I can cook a bud in that grill. Well, you did those ribeyes reverse sear. So, uh, well, did you do a reverse sear or did you do a, a sear and then, uh, uh, then cook? Those were sear first and I didn't do a reverse sear on those. Uh, I'm not well, a, I don't do reverse sear very often. Well, just so people know, reverse sear just means you you sear it after you you cooked it, and right. pre-sear is just you sear it first, and then you know, so it's just flip flopping it. So yeah. it's pretty much the same. You know, I think you get a little bit more smoke flavor, I guess, at the, when you do the reverse sear. Um, I really haven't compared the two directly. Um, you know, I don't do a whole lot of either one of them because I sous vide a lot of my steaks, but I don't eat. Uh, steaks all that often anyway but um but uh it, it's still it looks like it can do some good indirect uh, cooking no problem with that thing just like the 360 can oh yeah it's got plenty of space uh i'm totally happy with everything i've done with that grill so far and i'm looking forward to doing a lot more with it so what else have you got new on the patio besides those two i know that you uh you still have the uh, wood-fired pizza oven. I haven't seen you cook a whole lot with that lately, but um... yeah, I've still got the Alpha, the Alpha Four Pizza. I'm gonna do something else on that fairly soon. Uh, uh, I might. I'm thinking about maybe throwing a pan of lasagna on there, uh, and or maybe doing some more pizzas. Even the uh, one of the things Alpha likes to show off about those ovens is things that you can do with it besides pizza. So I might do. Uh, 
I might do a, you know, a lasagna in it. I've got, I love lasagna and I haven't made one lately. So, and that's something my wife loves too. So it might just happen sometime soon. It's uh there's a little bit of a learning curve to, to using a wood fired oven and getting it, getting the temperatures where you want it. But once you, uh, once you figure that out, it's not bad at all. It, it does well. I've still got that. I've still got, I've still got every, I haven't gotten rid of anything lately, but the master built, the master built gravity series 1050 that I have, uh, my rotisserie kit for that rolled in here today. And I'm looking forward to playing with that. Uh, I want to do some, uh, some stuff with that. And I'm trying to do some more content on the Kamado Joe with the Joe Tissery as well. I've, I've been, I'm, I'm afraid to admit this. <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of rotisserie cooking. And I know that uh, the Joe Tissery is a huge accessory for Kamado Joe and I need to do more with it. I want to do more with it. And I'm looking at some additional things I can do with the Joe Tisserie, especially on the classic three, the, the base of the classic threes deeper than the base of the classic two. So I've got more room I can work with there. So I think I'm going to do some additional content, but I am going to be doing some stuff here very soon with that rotisserie kit on the master built. I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, yeah, I, I've never been a fan of those baskets. I see people buying the baskets, the Napoleon baskets and stuff for the Kamado Joe. They just look like to be a pain in the butt to clean to me. <laughs> well, so. the Napoleon basket, that's a huge thing. I, there's a there's a whole cult out yeah. here that likes to throw chicken wings in those baskets. And uh, However, Kamado Joe, I'm not sure exactly when these things are going to drop. I'm expecting it any day. I'm expecting it here in the early spring Kamado Joe's got a basket kit they've got a rotisserie uh accessory kit coming and one of the things they have is a basket that looks to me like it will be easier to clean than the Napoleon basket and it's got it it's got this uh harness that holds the basket where the rod doesn't go through the basket it, it attaches to the end and there's a rectangular frame around it that spins and uh so there's no internal bar going through the basket. So there's the basket, the round basket, and then there's a rectangular box of some sort accessory that goes with this thing as well. I don't have my hands on it yet, so I can't, I can't show it to you, but it's coming. And yeah. like I said, I'm expecting to see that thing drop just about any time. Yeah, I've seen the, I think I've seen pictures of them and um, just not one in person yet. So yeah, that looks really interesting as well. The uh, Talking about the master belt, you, you still uh, uh, liking the master belt? Oh yeah, that thing's an amazing tool to cook with. I, as far uh, of most of the stuff I have here, that one's very high on the list for the flavor profile that's created when you cook on that grill. I love the food coming off of that thing. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm still uh, kicking around. You know, I, I, I don't know if I got room. I, I, I'm trying to limit what I put on the deck out there. I don't want to fill up my whole deck with grills. My wife would, you know, not really uh, smile on that. Well, <laughs> so. I'm, I'm with you. I've got that same <laughs> problem right now. I've got, uh, I've got a mess on my deck actually, because I've got too much stuff on it. So I'm going to have to reposition some stuff to the other side of the house. Yeah. I'm trying to make it. So everything I have out there is different from the, the next. So I got the, I got the Traeger eight, uh, Timberline 850, which is my only pellet grill now. I've got the Hasty Bake, which is a little bit different because it, it's got the, you know, revo remove or the uh, adjustable charcoal basket. And it, uh, that, that thing cooks pretty cool too. It's just something neat to have. The PK360, which I, I do a, most of my searing on that because I can get that thing up and firing really quick. And the Kamado Joe and then the Camp Chef Flat Top. But one thing I'm really looking forward to, and I've hooked up with Kamado Joe to be an ambassador, and hopefully they send me this new kettle grill that they've got coming out. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that too, because I don't think it's hit the market yet. And I think that's going to be their next uh, big seller. What do you think about that kettle grill? Uh, yeah, I think the kettle grill is going to be huge. And I'm looking forward to that one uh, landing here at the man cave as well. Uh, that. 
I'm trying, I don't know exactly when Kamado Joe's planning to put that out to the market, but I think uh, you're going to be seeing uh, a few of those hit the ground sooner rather than later. There's a, I don't, I don't have any dates, uh, but I, I don't think it's going to be a whole lot longer till you start seeing a little bit of a activity flurry around the, the Kettle Joe. And I am very excited about this grill because if everything I've been told about this grill and everything I've seen about this grill from the pictures that have been put out, uh, I really think this is going to be an amazing thing because if I understand correctly and do not, well, there it says it's $4.99. It's if they bring that grill, if that grill comes to the market at $4.99, I think it's going to be a big thing for Kamado Joe in more ways than one, because I think this is going to be a better kettle than a Weber. It's also, you know, it's more expensive than a Weber, but it's got the slow roller insert there that you can see in this picture. Uh, that comes in and out. You can cook with or without that in this grill. And uh, if I also understand correctly, that will be available soon as an accessory that you can buy for your Weber if you've got a Weber kettle. So Now, do you know if any of the other Kamado Joe accessories will work with it? Do you know the size or... Uh, if everything I have is correct, and once I said, once again, don't hold me to this because I don't have my hands on this yet, but no, it's not the same size as a classic or a big Joe. It's in between. It's like a Weber. It, I think it's probably 22 inches because if that, if that a slow roller insert will actually fit on a Weber kettle, then that's telling me this is a 22 inch grill right. rather than a, a 18 or a 24 if it's an 18 it will still fit some weber stuff but it won't fit the the typical weber stuff so i don't really i don't really know i haven't seen the specs uh from this thing yet but i'm looking forward to cooking on this because one of the things i think this grill is going to do is it's going to put a lot more customers into a kamado joe rig than can be in a kamado joe rig now because Right now, the bottom end of Kamado Joe is a $750 kit that is what essentially is the original Classic Joe. It's uh, been upgraded a little bit because it, it's the original Classic Joe, but it's got the uh, AMP firebox in it, and I believe it has a divide and conquer rack. I, I, I don't know. It might not have the divide and conquer rack. I don't remember, but it does have the AMP firebox in it. So that's one of the things this kettle is going to be different than other kettles on the market is it's going to have a ceramic type firebox in there. There's, there's a firebox inside of this grill. And from what I've seen in the pictures, it looks like it's it fits inside of a metal rack, which should uh, make assembly of that firebox real easy. <laughs> you can lift it in and out of the grill. That's one of the shortcomings of the existing AMP uh, boxes in the current Kamados is they're hard to deal with if you want to take it out. It takes a little practice and a little uh, finesse on yeah. those, but this one looks like it's they probably addressed that problem. And uh, between that and some of the things I've seen on the Pellet Joe, there's some enhancements on the Pellet Joe that I hope find their way into the Kama into the ceramic Kamado line. Uh, there's some really cool things about that grill that I think when Kamado Joe 4 comes around, I'm hoping some of the things I'm seeing on that Pellet Joe make it to the Kamado Joe yeah. ceramic grill as well. Well, and that firebox in the uh, kettle is going to make it different. It's going to hold, retain heat a lot better. And right. uh, you know, your charcoal will last longer. There's a lot of things that it's going to do just by having that ceramic insert in there to... Uh, well, it'll yeah. give you heat retention. Uh, exactly. Uh, you yeah. don't have you don't have any thermal mass inside of a Weber kettle. There's nothing in that grill that gets hot other than the charcoal. So when you lift the lid off of it, it takes it a little while for that thing to regain the temperature you lost. This is where the saying in the barbecue community came from. It says, "If you're looking, you ain't cooking," because every time you open the lid on a grill like that, 
it takes it a long enough time to recover that it's really changing your cooking time. But with, with this, this is giving it some of the same properties that a Kamado grill has because you've probably got, I'm gonna guess and say there's 50 pounds of ceramic there. I don't know how, or 40. There's a, that's, that's a lot of thermal mass going Dang inside it. of a steel grill, which will help. You know, when you pull the lid off of that thing and put it back on after it's warmed up, that ceramic's gonna give up heat and bring, bring you back to temperature a lot faster than it would in something that doesn't have that. Yeah. Now you were talking about how much of a pain it is to put the uh, AMP box together in the regular Kamado Joe. Now the, the classic two, it wasn't too bad. When I had it in the big Joe, the big Joe was a lot uh, more of a pain because they're so heavy. Each, right. pan, each panel is like seven or eight pounds and to try to hold them up and together. And then it's made out of ceramic. So you're trying to, you know, it's cutting your fingers up. So that was the only issue I had with that. And once you do it once or twice, like you said, you get used to it. But um, um, I've never had an issue on the classic too. It was just that on the big Joe, they're so heavy and so thick that it's, uh, you know, you usually have to have two people on there or you got to be able to, once you do it a couple of times, you figure it out. But these don't look like they're they're as thick as those in the uh, regular Kamado Joes, but thick enough to where it's going to make a big difference in this kettle grill to uh, retain a lot of heat. That's for sure. It's definitely going to going to you know open up the the kettle kettle grill um, market for sure, and uh, I'm looking forward to that as well. So. Um, just just because it's something new and different that's what i love that there's you know about kamado joe they keep coming out with new and different things and and trying to improve on stuff and, and make things better so hey all i want to introduce you to a company i just started working with fresh jacks organic spices out of jacksonville florida they're a small family-run company that's fast growing I've tried a bunch of their different seasoning blends and spices, and I can tell you they are all fresh, all organic. None of them contain artificial flavors or sweeteners. None of them have anti-caking agents or preservatives. They all taste like they were just made for you yesterday. Check them out, guys. They're on Amazon in the link below. They have different sample packs, different blends. Like I said, and they also have the individual seasonings and spices as well. Fresh Jacks organic spices check them out guys i love them all right so let's uh move off of that topic and let's start talking what i, I really want to talk about because i saw you posted up yesterday or the day before about um cooking outside where um we're not trying to get a smoke profile on something so i think a lot of, and i i don't know i think back when i was growing up I grew up in upstate New York and we didn't really do a lot of low and slow smoking up there. It was all grilling, you know, um, our summers were short, you know, two or three months was about the only time we actually got outside and grilled and it was usually hot and fast over charcoal. You know, the big thing up there is the Cornell chicken where you're, you're grilling chicken over a charcoal fire. And, um, it seems, I don't know, I guess when the barbecue, uh, you know, cooking shows started hitting the the cable channels everybody started getting into smoking i know it's been good you know in the south and texas and then north carolina and stuff has been around for a long time but it got really really popular uh, when these cable shows really started hitting and got popular people automatically think now you know because when i was growing up you know gas grills you never really smoked anything you just cook you know chicken and dogs burgers steaks what have you it wasn't smoking but over the last few years, it's been, you know, everybody uses smoking, you know, this brisket, you know, pork butt, ribs, things like that. So let's talk a little bit about actually cooking outside, but not cooking the typical barbecue meats that are out there now. Well, this, this uh, little uh, tirade I went on earlier <laughs> over the weekend started out, there was a lady who made a post on the Kamado Joe uh group on Facebook asking she had bought a a Chicago style deep dish pizza that's a take and bake style pizza you know where you just take this thing out of the box throw it in the oven and cook it and she had cooked it on her on her Kamado Joe uh you know like so many of us would and she she posted about it the thing had too much smoke flavor for her she didn't like the result she got and she asked the question 
you know, how can I cook something like that and not get all the smoke? And uh, as such, as things happen in social media, uh, she got ridiculed uh, unfairly and harshly, in my opinion, about, you know, people told her, well, you can boil it or you could cook it in the microwave or you could cook it in your indoor oven. You know, uh, they didn't answer her question. And, well, some of them did answer her question. Some of them told her, well, you, well, you just can't do that, which is wrong also, which is why I made, why I created this whole thing about this post about cooking without smoke when you don't want it. But this, this post I made was to address that because it turns out a lot of these people that didn't know the right answer to give this lady to start with also didn't know the right answer about how you can go about cooking with minimal to no smoke. So there's a lot of people out there that are like you and I there and they wanna cook things on their grill because they enjoy cooking on the grill. You know, you we look for excuses to use our grill. I don't I don't look I don't approach something uh from the mindset, well, is the grill gonna benefit it in some way? Like I don't feel like the grill has to give me a benefit to let to allow me to cook on it. You know, if I'm gonna cook a, a pan of uh let's let's take something simple like a, a green bean casserole, some, you know, mundane, <laughs> everyday thing. Why would I cook that on my grill? You know, what's it going to do for me? Is the or, or another one is why would I cook on a Dutch oven in my grill? With, uh, put a Dutch oven, something with the lid on it. Why would I do that on my grill? Is it, is, it's not going to gain anything if the lid's on. It's not going to give me smoke. It's not, but we like cooking on the grill. That's what we do. We, we look for excuses to cook on the grill. And this lady wanted to use her grill to make this pizza. And she got too much smoke. So what, what I wanted to do was bring to the table how you can go about using your grill to uh, cook something where you don't want to put smoke on it. There's a lot of things you can cook on a grill that smoke makes them not makes it not good. Smoke's not good on everything. That's right. <laughs> and people that tell you that it is, uh, don't go to their house for dinner because you're not going <laughs> to like it. <laughs> well, and those are the people that have narrow, narrow cooking yeah. palates or taste palates. Well, you know, that, that's one thing, you know, too. I always get and it. It boils down to people thinking they can only do one, one or two things on their grills or their smokers. And that's me and you are on the same wavelength. I like to do a, a million different things on my grills, not just pork butt ribs and, and brisket, right. you know, you know, you can do a whole lot more on those grills than just that. And then, you know, and some of the people think that's all they can do. That's all they want to do. And that's fine if you want to, but don't put that on everybody else because other people right. like to experiment and, and use their, you use all these different, that's why there's so many different kinds of grills and, and cookers out there, you know, to make different kinds of food. So, well, this problem of, of <clears throat> stuff having smoke on it that shouldn't have smoke on it was something that was brought to my attention by my wife. Uh, I've put food on the table before that I thought was excellent. I thought it was good and she didn't like it because she says it's too smoky. And the the difference the reason i don't notice it and she does is because i eat a lot more smoked food than <laughs> she does and you got to be aware of that you got to be aware that that you and i are desensitized to smoke more so than the average person it's like a chili head you know like our good friend mark mark garwatoski <laughs> he'll eat hot hot peppers don't bother him because he eats them all the time but it's the same way with smoke and i put uh I think the, the one of the more recent things I did on my grill that my wife didn't like was some blueberry muffins. And my wife loves blueberry muffins. We both do. And I cooked some on the grill and she didn't like those. And there wasn't enough smoke there that I could really uh, feel it, but she did and she wouldn't eat them. So, you know, this, this, this means I need to come up with a way to do it. So in this, in this write-up I did the other day, I talked about ways to do this. And the first thing I said, to just to get it out of the way, is if you have a good quality, properly maintained gas grill, 
that's the an, that's the best answer because if your if your airflow is working properly in a gas grill, you're going to get clean, uh, taste-free heat from the gas grill. So that's one way to cook if you don't want smoke. The Kamado does it fairly well also, but there's some requirements that need to be met. You need, yeah. Here's here's the post. It's on the Man Cave Meals page. And, yeah, I'll uh, put a link too, so people want to uh, take a look at it. I'll post. I wrote this up in point. detail. It's like a it's like an essay. But uh, if you want to do uh, minimal smoke cooking on your Kamado, you have to have the Kamado clean, which means you don't want any grease residue in there or fat or anything left over from a bunch of previous cooks. So if you know how to do a self-cleaning burn, you know, at five or 600 degrees to burn all of that residue out of your grill, you need to do that first if you want a, uh, a good environment for cooking things that you don't want smoke on because part of that smoke that's coming to the food that shouldn't be is not just coming from charcoal, it's coming from that uh, grease residue burning out of your grill at the same time that produces an awkward flavor on something like a blueberry muffin, for instance. And uh, so the first thing you have to do is get, get the grease residue out of the grill and get the grill clean. Here, I'm fortunate enough to have two classic Joes. So a while back, I, I discovered this uh, great thing with this. And I've got my classic two set up as my clean grill and my classic three is set up as my meat grill. I cook all of my meat and proteins on the classic three. If I want to cook a pizza or if I want to bake a loaf of bread or if I want to do blueberry muffins again, I do it on the classic two because there's no grease residue in that grill. I most recently cooked, pump, cooked my mom's pumpkin bread recipe and made a video of that on the classic two. I did this back during the holiday season and I gave my wife a slice of that pumpkin bread and she couldn't tell that that had been cooked on the grill. So I had a really clean grill, but not only did I have a clean grill, I was using clean burning charcoal. All charcoal is not created equal. And from my experience, the two cleanest burning charcoals that I have found that I, that I can use when I don't want a smoky profile is the Royal Oak charcoal that you can get at Walmart or the Rockwood charcoal that's available at some of the higher end places. Uh, those two charcoals are at about uh, opposite ends of each other on the price scale. The Royal Oak's really cheap and the Rockwood's fairly expensive. Now, what, what if they had like a Weber kettle or something like that and they used briquettes? Or briquettes usually burn pretty clean as well. Uh, aren't they? I, I, not in my experience. I've, I cooked like I, I use briquettes and I use them in that PK Go and I use them in that PK 360 also. They, uh, I'm not sure how to classify the briquette. They burn fairly cleanly, but they do bring, they bring a flavor profile with them that's different from, uh, hardwood lump. I don't really know how to describe it. I guess it's all going to depend there on how hot you're cooking. If you're cooking at, at 400 degrees, I think you might be okay with, uh, or if you're cooking at 350 to 400, you might be okay with briquettes. I need to try that, Darren, because I really haven't tested uh, briquettes to see how they perform. Now that you've mentioned it, though, I'm going to do that. I'm well, gonna yeah, there's also the char logs and stuff that are out there. I know that B&B &B has some char logs that are supposed to be similar to briquettes, but they burn a little different and they're, they're made a little different. They're more compact. So, um, yeah, there's there's some other fuel. That's another thing, the, the fuel that's been out there as far as charcoal and stuff. Um, what about pellet grills? Are, are pellet grills easy to uh, cook and stuff that you don't want smoke on as well? Uh, not really. It depends on your grill. And I think I can see smoke coming from my pellet, Joe, even at, up at 400 degrees. The, the Traeger probably works a little bit better at higher temperatures. You would just have to try your pellet grill and see because all of these pellet grills have a little, there are some little differences about all of them. I'm not sure how well the pellet grill would do, but I think if you're cooking hot, it's probably going to do 
okay, but I don't, it's not going to be as clean as uh, a Kamado with these, uh, these hardwood lump charcoals that are, that are fully carbonized. That's one of the things that differentiates uh, rockwood and something like Royal Oak from uh, your, your Kamado Joe or your Jealous Devil. Those charcoals feel heavier and they feel denser than, than these others. And the reason for that is because they're not always fully carbonized and they're not usually fully carbonized. And that's what gives them the flavor profile they have. Uh, that's why they have that flavor profile. And I'm not saying that's bad because that's actually what I prefer to use when I'm cooking meat. But uh, it is going to be all about the clean fuel. Uh, I haven't spent any real time trying to do this kind of baking on my pellet grill and I haven't had the Kamado Joe pellet Joe long enough to get around to doing some of those uh, more outside the box things with it yet I'm still trying to uh, get the basics uh, felt I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand how well that grill does all of the basic things before I uh, go off the rails with it and start doing something like a like a cake or a cheesecake in it and I'll put it to the taste test when when I give it to my wife if she'll eat it then uh then anybody will eat it if it's if it's a smoke issue well the good thing is that you know people can I know with gas grills they always you know they don't really expect to get smoke unless they're using a little smoker box or something in it so the people can understand that they can use their Kamado or uh, other grill to cook without smoke. They don't have to have smoke. <laughs> so, um, you know, cause, uh, I think a lot of people have that in their mind, you know, and like I said, I think it comes from all these, uh, popular barbecue shows that people get, got all hooked up on and they just think that everything outside being cooked now has to be, you know, smoked, you know, have that smoky flavor to it. Well, it's, it's common. I, yeah. In the Kamado Joe groups and some of the other groups I participate in, it's like everything, it's it's about smoking food and i try to keep reminding myself that <laughs> mm -hmm. i i uh, i like smoked food don't get me wrong but i've had enough i've had enough of it in my life i've had more than the average person and uh i don't feel like everything i cook needs to have a smoke profile or a smoke flavor and everybody gets to that point if i won't say everybody let's say anybody that cooks half as much as I cook on a grill, they'll get to that point in their lifetime. People that only use their grill two or three, four times a month, they're, they're probably, they're going to want smoke every time they cook. And, and it's simply because that's all they do with it. They may never get to the point where they want to try cooking blueberry muffins on their grill. <laughs> <laughs> well, but they should, they should know that they can. So I think maybe that, you know, people need to, expand especially now with the you know all the lockdowns and people staying home more cooking at home more not going out as much that you all know right. they should understand that they they have a, a whole you know other set of tools out there that they can use to do other things with than just cooking a pork butt or, or ribs or brisket so and it all brings me right back to the mantra that i've been preaching for many years once you realize that anything you can cook on your stove top or in your oven can also be cooked on your grill it'll change your life and uh, this is just one of those things that that proves that to well it proves it you know everybody i i also have to to remind myself constantly that everybody's not as interested in cooking on the grill as i am and as you are you know we uh we're we're a, a rare breed yeah, but you know what? We talk to people that do. I mean, people watch us and look, look, you know, look at our information well, because because they're looking for, you know, especially with you with all your come out of Joe videos, they're looking how to use their Joe in different ways. So, um, and I'm going back to you know your come out of Joe videos. There's plenty of come out of Joe videos where you weren't getting smoke on it. You were baking. You were doing some other things. So um, that's one of the things yeah. that attracted me to your videos. You weren't just cooking a pork butter ribs every time I, you know, saw a new video coming up from, you know, John. So, well, this is one thing I can take credit for. And that's, I have gotten a lot of people to go outside of the box or outside of their own box when it comes to grilling. And I have, uh, helped people, uh, 
decide that they're going to use their grill for more things than steaks, burgers, and hot dogs. So, you know, anytime, anytime I can talk somebody into getting outside of that box on the grill, then I call it success because it's, you know, it's creating more people. I'm trying to create more people like us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I, it, I want it, people to be looking for excuses to cook on their grill. And I've, I've helped a few people uh, get over that hump and I uh, hope to get help a few more. Well, and it also just expands their whole, their whole cooking. You know, some people only cook certain things and that's when, you know, you, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, men, especially all they do is cook outside and they only do it a couple times, you know, a month maybe. And that's their domain, you know, then their wife or whoever, a girlfriend, you know, cooks all the stuff inside. I like taking the stuff outside in from inside outside. And I like some, you know, cooking inside as well but it, it expands your overall cooking repertoire when you can do a lot more things when you, when you start opening it up and go, Hey, you know, yeah, I usually, I only cooked outside a couple times a month and then the rest of them, you know, my wife cooked, but you know, people get the, the bug when they start getting some of these grills and then, then they start expanding their whole cooking, you know, techniques and, and, and learning different ways to cook inside and outside. So. Right. It, uh, when you, I mean, get, you can say, I know personally that you, when you first started cooking outside, you didn't do a whole lot of inside and it kind of, when you started getting more into it, you, you're out in indoor cooking actually expanded as well. Correct. Uh, yeah, pretty much because I started paying uh, more attention to the cooking process and it, that's, that's at the point when I decided I wanted to become a, a, a a decent cook you know i wanted to be able to cook not just on the grill but i wanted to be able to cook no matter where i was cooking and uh i started paying closer attention to what i was doing and what when you when you start doing that things start to make sense you know if yeah. you, got, you got to learn to uh learn some techniques uh one of the the cooking classes that i'm taking are all based on uh a methods it that he uses the term method all the time it's how a chef's taught to cook you know once you learn the methods uh then you don't need recipes you just need the experience that goes along with knowing what ingredients go together and then you know what to do with it when you have those ingredients and you know it's it's a long road it's something i wish i had paid closer attention to when i was young but here i am now 52 and uh I'm just now really learning to cook, but uh, Hey, you know, you, you're having fun doing it. It's not something that you're having to, to learn, you know, for a career or anything. You're, you're doing this because you want to learn. And that's when you have the most fun. I think when you experiment, try things out, you know, here, Tanya, take, taste this, see if it's bad. <laughs> well, that's one thing I like about Tanya. Tanya is pretty good about telling me when something sucks. Uh, she, she'll, uh, she'll, she does it uh, hesitantly, but I've, I've about got her trained to tell me when she doesn't like something because I need to know that. And Tanya's too nice. <laughs> she'll, she'll, uh, she'll, she'll say, mm, it's not bad. And, you know, I can tell from, uh, from how she reacts to something, whether or not she likes it or not. And uh, the other day, I, I don't remember what I had fed her the other day. I had, I had made something uh once one of the meals i made last week and i said you're quiet i said you must not like that and she says i'm quiet because i'm eating and I shut <laughs> up. <laughs> and it turned out she really liked that so I, I made her some of the things that she really likes last week and I'm, i may bring some of that to the grill at some point yeah that's always always good to please your woman with food every once in a while i had to do that with my wife last week as well so I made her a meal that uh, she pretty much asked for. So I had, I made her, you know, her favorite thing is like fried shrimp. So I made a big thing of fried shrimp and, you know, we got the biscuits from red lobster that she likes, you know, the garlic butter biscuit, cheesy biscuit things. And yep. we did it all up and she was really, really happy. So <laughs> well, you got to do that every once in a while. Hey, I could, I could have made all that all outside too. So, <laughs> all right. But all right, John, well, I appreciate that. Anything else you want to discuss? Anything else coming up with the man cave that you uh, got going on? I don't think I've got anything exciting happening here. I'm like you said, I'm looking forward to, uh, 
seeing that kettle, Joe, that, uh, that's something I really, really want to put through its paces. I want to see what I can and can't do with that grill because I also am really looking forward to the opportunity to make a bunch of cooking videos using that grill because I believe any anything I can do on that grill, it's obviously going to be doable on any of the other Kamado grills also. So I want to you know, challenge myself to really put that grill through its paces and see uh, see what we can make it do. And I'm really, really looking forward to that one. But here's, I, I should have asked you this earlier when we were talking about that. Do you know the availability of that grill if it's going to be um, in the uh, big box stores? Is it going to be strictly for the Kamado Joe dealers like uh, Atlanta Grill Company? Or do you have any idea where how they're going to market it? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I I do believe Atlanta Grill Company is going to have it, uh, which is a premier dealership situation. You know, they're going to have that grill, but I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that, and I'm not even willing to really speculate on it because I would hate to say that, yeah, I think that's going to show up at Lowe's and Home Depot and it not. Yeah, because so far I've seen it, you know, like for like the ones I pulled up, but the pre-orders for, you know, Kamado Joe dealers. So right. maybe that's going to be something they're just going to hang on to them for now, or maybe they're going to open it up eventually to the big box stores. It's hard to, you know, guess on that stuff now that the master built people are all involved in it too. So at that, at that $499 price point, it makes me want to say, yeah, that grill might show up. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking as well, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's a good question. I'm, I'm going to try to get somebody from Kamado Joe on here sometime soon. So and see if we can get some of those kind of answers to see what's going on with the, uh, with the stuff in, in the future. So I know they got, they're working on some other stuff, but I'm excited about that stuff as well, but I want to thank you for being on. Always great to have you on always great discussions and um, anything else. That's it. Just I ready. Good. We'll, we'll have to do it again sometime. We got through the holidays. Okay. And we're in 2021 now. So everything's saved now, right? Everybody's going to, everything's going to be okay. Oh, uh, well, you know, <laughs> I've, I've got high hopes that uh, 2021, I, I'm hoping 2021 is going to be better than 2020. And if, if I get to take a real vacation this year, uh, <laughs> then, I'll, then I'll deem it to be a success. Hallelujah. My, we, we've booked two cruises and had them both canceled in the last uh, four months. So um, we're hoping to be able to get back on a boat. My wife, that's her favorite thing in the world to do is go on cruises. So haven't but, sat down in a restaurant since March and uh I haven't been on an airplane since well before that yeah. and uh Tanya and I took a little road trip back in October where we we went zoo hopping in Tennessee where it's all outdoor stuff you know where we weren't worried about the confines of uh indoor spaces and social distancing so much but uh I've got you know I want to get back into a regular vacation. I want to take Tanya to San Francisco and that's going to be the first thing we do when we're able to break quarantine a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm with you there. I haven't been there either. We were supposed to be at the uh, CV, uh, International CV Association summit there this last year and they actually were going to do it this year and then they postponed it now to 2022 again. So hopefully we'll get out there someday, but I want to thank you for being on John's always a pleasure to have you on. I'm, I'm glad we get to get to have these discussions and hope people get, uh, get something out of it. Make sure you check out the link below. I'll have a link to John's a man cave meals, Facebook page, and you can see that article that he wrote on how to, um, uh, have a, uh, cook without having smoke on your Kamado, Kamado grill. Thanks again, John. I appreciate it. Thanks Darren. Have a good one. All right. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Well, thanks again, guys, for listening to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I'm going to thank John Setzler of Man Cave Meals. Once again, make sure you check out Man Cave Meals on Facebook and YouTube. And also make sure you check out Fire and Water Cooking on Facebook, YouTube, and the podcast. And I'll see you again on the next Fire and Water Cooking Podcast.